What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm out here in the shop today and I want to do a little video because I figured there might be some other people searching for this uh, on a Mahindra 8560 on how to idle the tractor down if it's idling a little bit higher than you think it should or you want it to for certain tasks. I'll show you how to idle it down. I've already done this to my tractor and uh, no ill effects. You don't want to go too low but I'll explain all that in a little bit. Uh, any tractor basically with a mechanical injection pump if it's a newer tractor made newer than 2013 or 2012, uh, this is 2012 here. This was the last year model on the 8560 and went to the Empower 85. Uh, if it's that style, it would have to be done electronically, which I'm not even sure if you can do. Uh, the dealer probably can, <clears throat> but that's about it. But with the old school injection pumps, uh, they have an idle screw on them. I'll show you that. Uh, first thing is you either need to take the loader off or raise the loader up in the air. So we're going to start the tractor up and we'll raise the loader up in the air so that we can get the side panel here off. And I'll show you the screw that you need to turn in order to do this. So I'm going to show you whenever I start this tractor up uh, how I got it set and the battery light will likely come on because it is idling at a lower RPM and the uh, the grid heater is cool outside so the grid heater light will come on right here and uh, whenever I bump the throttle up a little bit the battery light will go back off. Uh, the older tractors and older vehicles and stuff like with a GM one wire alternator used to do this as well. Um, that's just the way the alternator functions on them. But uh, anyway so you'll take note of that. Also my tack, the Mahindra tacks are bad about not working. And so this one doesn't work very well. You have to bump the uh, dash to make it work. So take note of that. You'll see me do that when I bump the dash. And then we're going to raise the loader up and uh, I'll show you the screw we're looking at. So here we go. You see the little uh, glow plug light there. It's actually a grid heater on these that don't have glow plugs. It has a grid heater. And uh, this battery light will probably stay on when it first starts. setting out it'll come up just a little bit whenever this goes off the load on the alternator lightens up it'll come up just above 750 probably about 760 beforehand it was idling about 900 rpm which is a little bit too high for my liking give it just a little bit of throttle. You see the battery light went out. So somewhere in that range you can idle up just a little bit if you want but it was idling originally about there. And so I like it about right there. Raise the loader up. cut it back off so you guys can hear me there um, so I have it setting about 750 rpms right now and uh, that's where it seems to be okay at I don't like it being at 900 because it uh, let me set this camera down so I can get this off of here without scratching it all up okay I got that side panel off here and I'm gonna show you what you're looking at okay there's a screw just like this one right here this is uh, your maximum rpm screw right here. You see this little cap on the end? It's got a little metal cap right there on the end. Uh, that is to keep you from tampering with it because you're not supposed to be messing with these adjustments. Um, anyway, your idle RPM is on the back side. I don't know if you can see the threads of that screw in the back back there. Let's see if I can come around the other direction. Still can't see it. It is back over in behind the injector pump, back over in there. Uh, pretty much straight across from where this one's at right here on the back side. And if you look here, you can see right there, see where that's touching? When I let off, that's your idle back there. You can see where it's touching the screw. 
in. It's back in behind there. It's kind of hard to film, uh, but that's where it's at. You may have to pull this uh, throttle position sensor off. I did not to do this. I went through right here. You have to get this uh, cap that's on this one here. There'll be one on that one back there too. You have to get that cap off and that's a difficult part. Uh, you can't really get to it and you don't want to take a hammer and just go to beating crazy on the injector pump because this is only a little ear right here on the side of this and you can break that ear off. So you don't want to get carried away with it. But I took a small little screwdriver on the end of this cap and just gently tapped with a small hammer and got it in there and was able to pry this off. And then there will be a 10 millimeter nut, I believe. There's two of them. One of them is inside here. Use a socket and you can pull this uh, little cap here off. And then the next one is for your set point. And I'm trying to describe this because you really can't see in there. It's actually the one on the back that you'll be adjusting. Like I say, don't mess with this one. This is for your maximum RPM. So when you're running wide open and you don't really want to rev the motor up no more than what it already goes from the factory. But if you want to set the idle, it's that one in the back back there. You can see the throttle stop hitting it back there. Uh, it's just a little bit hard to get to and a little bit difficult to film what's going on there. But once you get that cap off, there will be a, uh, I think it's a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna try to get this camera here to zoom in. Maybe you can see it, hopefully. I'm gonna zoom it in and we'll see. Well, yeah, not really. Can't really see too good. Anyway, there's a 10 millimeter and a flathead that adjust it. I don't know. Let's see. This right here, it, it looks like this, but this is not it. This is where you set your uh, fuel amount uh, that determines the horsepower of the engine. So that's not the one I'm talking about. The one I'm talking about is over in behind there, but you can't really see it. But anyway, there is a, uh, a 10 millimeter screw that, uh, or 10 millimeter nut right there that you crank the nut loose just a little bit, stick a flathead screwdriver in there and back it out. And uh, <clears throat> whenever you back it out, it, it will allow this here to close further. When you turn it in, you increase your idle RPM like this right here, it's pushing it further out. When you back that screw out back there, this will close further in this direction and will idle the tractor down. So you can set it where you would like. Um, as I say, this was set from the factory about 900. I want it just a little bit lower. And uh, I didn't film this when I did it because as you see, it's hard to see in there to even tell, to even explain, to get a close up shot of what I'm talking about. It's just the way it is. But I figure this might be helpful to somebody that was uh, interested in doing this. You can see that little cap on the one I hadn't messed with there, how that little cap's made. But you just got to get that cap off without breaking anything on the injector pump. And then uh, you can adjust the idle where you would like it to idle. And uh, so I'm going to try that right there at about 750 RPM. Uh, that's what I'm going to try and see how that works because 900 was a little bit high if you're trying to get something out of the back of the truck. Uh, you're just trying to be real slow and cautious and also if you're trying to communicate with somebody that's trying to guide you um, having out a little lower uh, definitely helps in that situation one more thing i wanted to point out if you're going to let the tractor set in idle for a long period of time it's not good to have it set in the idling at such a low rpm but it does make it nicer when you're trying to unload something and trying to get finesse uh, as this is a manual transmission tractor it's not hydrostatic so having it out of lower means you can finesse it a little bit easier without having to slip the clutch so much. And uh, so that's the main reason I did it, along with it being a little quieter uh, for trying to communicate with people. But if you're going to let it sit there for 10, 15 minutes, uh, especially in cold weather, go ahead and mump the idle back up, uh, which most people know this. You should be doing that anyway, bump it up about 1,200 or so, uh, so that you get a complete combustion in the combustion chamber. Uh, so anyway, we'll wrap this video up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.